One of the most well-known tests of endurance is the Tour de France cycling race. The first race of 2,428 kilometers in 1902 was won by Maurice Garin in 94 hours and 33 minutes, who managed a daily average cycling speed of 26 kilometers per hour. Over the years, the course and the length of the race has changed. Today, it is about 3,500 kilometers, but the average speed of the race is now in excess of 40 kilometers an hour. Since the energy cost of cycling is an exponential function of speed, this reflects an approximately threefold increase in the rate of energy expenditure by modern cyclists compared to the early pioneers like Garin. In 1988, researchers showed that the average daily energy expenditure of cyclists in the Tour de France was about 8,000 calories per day, or 4.7 times BMR. On this basis, the total energy expenditure to complete 21 stages of the race can be estimated at about 168,000 calories. The success of the Tour de France in turn inspired a North American entrepreneur, C.C. Pyle, to organize a similar event in the US, but he chose a running race, this time across the breadth of North America, from LA to New York, a distance of 4,960 kilometers. The first race began on Sunday, March 4th, 1928, and was completed in 84 stages. The average stage distance was 59 kilometers. The winner of the first race covered the distance in 573 hours, four minutes and 34 seconds, at an average pace of 8.7 kilometers per hour. The return race was won by the person who had finished second in the first race. His time was 525 hours, 57 minutes and 20 seconds, at an average speed of 9.5 kilometers per hour. A reasonable calculation suggests that the minimal hourly energy expenditure of a 65 kilo athlete running on the flat at a pace of between 8.7 to 9.5 kilometers per hour would likely be around 600 calories per hour or about 4,300 calories per day or 2.5 times BMR. On this basis, the total energy expenditure during the race would have been about 340,000 calories or about twice the energy expenditure for a competitor in the modern Tour de France. These performances are impressive, but were surpassed by the first explorers of the South Pole in the early 20th century. The British team of Robert Falcon Scott, who manholed their provisions to the pole and back on sleds, covered the 1400 kilometers to the South Pole in 86 days and a further 1,082 kilometers over 73 days before frostbite to Scott's legs doomed him to death. While it was not possible to directly measure the team's energy expenditure at the time, the total energy cost of their effort can be reasonably estimated from data collected on more recent manhauling expeditions. In the southern summer of 1985, Gareth Wood, Roger Swan and Roger Meir retraced the first half of Scott's 1911 trip by manhauling all their supplies, unsupported, 1,410 kilometres over 70 days. Doubly labelled water studies found that their daily energy expenditure was between 6,000 and 6,900 calories for a total energy expenditure of about 455,000 calories. And these data for daily energy expenditure are very similar to those measured on Dr. Michael Stroud and Sir Ranulph Fiennes during a 48-day expedition to the North Pole. Stroud subsequently concluded that Scott's team might have sustained a daily energy expenditure of between 5,900 and 6,900 calories for 159 days, equating to a total energy expenditure of around 1 million calories, or almost six times the energy expended by a competitor in the modern Tour de France. But what does this tell us about our metabolic scope, about the limits of human endurance? A recent study which compared the full spectrum of endurance events from marathons, ultramarathons, the Tour de France cycle race, up to the 140 day race across the USA I mentioned before, found that our metabolic scope changes with the length of the event. For shorter events like an 11 hour triathlon and 25 hour ultramarathon, the researchers observed metabolic scopes of 9.4 and 8.5 times basal metabolic rate respectively. During the Tour de France, which takes place over 23 days, the metabolic ceiling lowered to between four and five times basal metabolic rate. Ultimately, the researchers found that, over an extended period like the 140-day race across America, there seems to be a metabolic ceiling of 2.5 times BMR, and this limit is defined by our capacity to match calorie input with output. Ultimately, the heart, lungs, and vascular systems 
do have the capacity to bring in and distribute oxygen and nutrients at more than 10 times BMR for several hours. But there comes a point when our digestive systems just cannot process enough energy to sustain us beyond 2.5 times our BMR over an extended period of physical activity. Going back to the group who died exploring the Antarctic, what this tells us is that Scott and his team probably sustained a metabolic scope of 3.8 times their basal metabolic rate. Based on what we now know from recent research about our metabolic ceiling, Scott and his team died from starvation rather than from peripheral fatigue. Like our evolutionary story, survival and the limits of human endurance all come down to a question of energy availability.